Hi guys, I believe one of the first steps to be taken to improve things in Britain is of course to vote out the current shower of Tory MPs. The Conservative Party need to face a political thrashing at the polls. The headbangers need to go and one parliament or two will perhaps hopefully undo the damage done by people like the ERG and Boris Johnson. The next generation of Conservative MPs need to be pro-European if Britain is to rejoin the EU. It isn't enough for Labour alone to be pushing European Union membership, both sides need to embrace it. But until the current band of Tories are swept from power, let me share with you this humorous clip of historian and journalist Max Hastings having a go at Boris Johnson and his sycophants. The Westminster the bubble, as we like to call it, has yeah. had a pretty bad week. No, terrible week. Uh, but some of us have been saying for a very long time that we have to accept the fact that Boris Johnson especially put into government um, a, a whole range of people who would never have made it in any other government. I look back on my close friends in politics over the years, uh, Roy Jenkins, Michael Heteltine, Ken Clark, um, uh, Douglas Hurd. Th these people would have just looked in total disbelief at, at what's happening around us now. And frankly, you know, I, I wrote somewhere that when Boris Johnson formed his cabinet, um, that most of the members of that cabinet, I mean, it was economists who said that Jacob Rees-Mogg belonged in a museum, not in a cabinet. <laughs> I love this. Jacob Rees-Mogg belonged <laughs> in a museum. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And um, <laughs> what are what are we thinking of to allow these people in power? And, and we, the voters, have done it. Um, but we have to see these people for what they are. And they're a deeply unimpressive group of people. We have got to do better. The British people deserve better. But we've got to try and vote ourselves some better people. But that's going to take another 18 months, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's true. Right. That's and we true. can't get around that. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't get around to that unless something happens and Rishi Sunak um, or his party, I should say, calls a vote of no confidence in Parliament and then he is removed. But yeah, it, it's going to be another few months of this roller coaster ride. But Max Hastings is completely correct here. This There was a type of politician in the past who were statesmen, stateswomen. People who, you disagreed with their policies, but there was a sort of honour about them. There was a respect that they were able to hold in public life. There were scandals, of course, but nothing in comparison to, to, to what's happening today. But the calibre of politician in the past, and maybe we're looking at it through rose-tinted glasses, but it seems the calibre were was much higher, much better politicians in the past compared to what Boris Johnson put in his cabinet and to a certain extent Rishi Sunak has done too. The likes of Nadine Doris, Therese Coffey, Michael Gove, um, Jacob Rismark, <laughs> you know, the, the, this is Matt Hancock. The, these are the people who Boris Johnson surrounded himself with. Why? Because they were competent? No, of course not. Because they were sycophants, they were people, they were yes men and yes women, they would do as they're told. And Johnson, of course, wanted people around him who were, in a sense, less intelligent than him, because they wouldn't challenge his power. There were charlatans as well. Uh, Matt, uh, what's his name, Michael Green, <laughs> Grand Chaps. You know, people like this should be nowhere near the levers of power and have demonstrated that they're incapable of running a government. Government ministers exchanging important information via WhatsApp. Insane. So as I said at the beginning of this, what needs to happen is the Conservatives need a political thrashing at the polls. They need to go into opposition for a while with as few, as po as few members of Parliament as possible so that the party can start you know, looking at itself and realize we can't, we can't win elections like this. We can't attempt just to weaponize these culture wars or these um, fringe issues. We actually have to present a real alternative to the Labour Party. And if 
Keir Starmer is successful, it's going to be extremely difficult for the Conservatives to present an alternative. I said before, elections are man- elections are referendums on the incumbent. So it's generally at the next election, you're not really voting for Keir Starmer. You're voting against the Tories, and if Keir Starmer in his first parliament or second parliament can do a good job, a pretty good job, then he will remain in power. That's how it works. And it'll be interesting to see after the next election what what path the Conservative Party take. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what do you think about all of this? As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.